I have an awesome article here that discusses changes that occur before earthquakes and it discusses a new mechanism that can account for all of the earthquake effects that we see. So in the past nobody understood why all these different types of phenomena seem to occur before an earthquake and this paper explains a mechanism that can account for all these different effects and it also goes into new ideas such as changes in the groundwater chemistry that occurs before an earthquake and this is linked to possible effects on animals and some data that's been collected looking at the effects on animals and also a few other earthquake effects that occurred in conjunction with this. The research article is called Groundwater Chemistry Changes Before Major Earthquakes and Possible Effects on Animals and it's by Grant et al. There are a bunch of authors that you can see and it's published in the International Journal of Environmental Research and Public Health. It was also published in 2011. These are new results. I'm not going to get into the details of the molecular reactions that occur that create all of these earthquake effects and I'm not going to get into the details of how this primary mechanism is created. I'm just going to tell you generally what it is and how it behaves. Uh, there's a ton of information in the research article and if you are interested in this topic I absolutely recommend that you read it. The link is provided below. So Generally what happens is that there's a buildup in tension in the Earth's crust and this creates what is called a positive hole and it's a particle but it's very interesting because it can travel very fast and very far and it's very mobile in nature it can travel across sand it can travel across soil it travels very rapidly and it can go for tens of kilometers through the field. It's also unique because of its dual characteristics. On one hand it's a charge carrier that's an electric charge and on the other hand it's the chemical equivalent to a free oxygen radical. These free radicals are highly reactive and highly oxidizing. They result in a huge variety of reactions. For instance, they oxidize water to hydrogen peroxide. They also, at the rock water interface, oxidize dissolved organic compounds and it leads to changes in their fluorescence spectra. And some of the compounds that are formed may be irritants or toxins to animals. There will be a cascade of effects and I just want to do a review some of them. Low to ultra low frequency electromagnetic emissions from the ground, earthquake lights which are the luminous phenomena that occur prior to many seismic events, enhanced infrared emission changes in the atmosphere near the ground and at altitudes that are very high up, perturbations in the ionosphere, changes in the ocean water and ground or spring water chemistry. Changes that occur in the magnetic field will also affect animals. Most animals have magnetite. Uh, it's a substance that is highly sensitive to the magnetic field that the animals exist in. Figure 8 just shows how partial oxidation will end up creating a change in the fluorescence spectrum. 
Figure 6 shows the fluorescence spectra of water samples in Turkey, and it's a period from 99 to 2003. And you can see this elevated level, the red line, occurs just before an earthquake. Next, I'm going to show you a series of data from different domains all of which are associated with the same earthquake. So uh, data showing water samples, animal behavior, radio signal interference, and I will mention lights that were seen. All of these are associated with an Italian earthquake. Figure 7 shows a similar effect as Figure 6. These water samples were collected in Italy prior to and after a modest 5.3 earthquake. This figure shows you the number of toads that were observed uh, by a pond in their mating location over the course of many days. And it also shows you on the same timeline when an earthquake of varying magnitudes occurred. And the top part of this chart on the y-axis, on the vertical axis, it shows the number of toads per day that were observed. And the x horizontal axis is the date. And on the lower chart, you see the magnitude on the y vertical axis of the earthquake. And on the x axis, you see the timeline. And the important thing is to compare the top and the bottom chart. The top chart is the male toads that were observed by the pond during their mating season, which was a very strong motivation for them to stay. It's extremely unusual for a toad to leave during that period of time. They usually stay for about six to seven weeks once this process occurs. However, during this time period you can see that just prior to this large earthquake the number of toads decreases to zero when the earthquake finally occurs and then it slowly comes back up and diminishes again before this last aftershock and then rises back again trend toward the normal level. So this is very strong evidence that the toads were trying to flee from something because their natural inclination is extremely high to stay where they are by the pond. Figure 10 is a follow-up to the last figure that we just looked at. And what it does is just demonstrate that rainfall was not the reason for the toad departure away from the pond. Figure 11 shows evidence for ionospheric disturbances along radio transmission paths over a time frame in Italy when an earthquake occurred. And you see on the x-axis here the date, and on the y-axis, the vertical axis, you see the attenuation of the signal. You also see various repetitive disturbances in the signal twice a day because this only occurs during sunset and sunrise. To view the differences in attenuation, during the actual earthquakes, you look at the dotted line circles. They're very fine, but you can see them if you look. And there is a clear difference in those time frames in the signal. So this is strong evidence that the earthquakes interfered with radio transmission paths. There were also occurrences of light, earthquake lights that were viewed at a similar time. 
for this particular earthquake. So all in all, there is clear evidence that there was a conjunction of earthquake warnings that occurred during this time before this Italian earthquake. Other animal anomalies that were observed in the past are also discussed in this article. There's a discussion of hundreds of snakes in China that were observed before earthquakes in the past and actually snakes that were observed before earthquakes in Italy as well to leave their underground locations before an earthquake when the temperature was below freezing at a time where it was deadly for them to leave. And this has been the case with lots of fish and amphibians in particular. They're extremely sensitive where you see deep water fish rising to the higher surface levels or frogs and other amphibians leave the water. I'm sure people have even observed things like worms coming up at times when they are very unlikely to appear. What is the story then if you look at the whole article? Well, the big message from the article is that there is a single mechanism now that can account for all the effects that you see prior to an earthquake, all of the warning signals. And there are also effects that have been found in the groundwater chemistry that have not been observed before. The article gives you a very detailed description of how all of these reactions occur. But probably the most important thing here is now that the underlying mechanism has been discovered, it's an electrical effect that was not known about before, and now that some more specific changes have been found in water samples and whatnot, it can drastically increase our ability to predict earthquakes because we are more clear about what types of measurements we need to do. What I think is also important about this article is that a lot of effects that are described in the article can be measured. For instance, changing pH levels can be measured, or the presence of certain substances that increase, like carbon monoxide. And it's always important to remember that erratic animal behavior can occur at any time, but when you observe these things in conjunction with the other things described in this article, then you can have a much more solid prediction basis for an earthquake.